Hi, this is Rick Shear with VMware Tips, and this is our VMware vSphere 5 video series. Part 1. Installing VMware ESXi 5.0 in under 5 minutes. Alright, so what we have here is a Cisco UCS Unified Compute System. We have four blades available to us, and we're going to open a KVM connection to one of these blades. This blade has no local drives and has one LUN connected to it for installation of ESXi. The first thing we're going to have to do, though, is make a connection to the downloaded ISO from the VMware website. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded the ISO from the VMware website, but what I'm going to do now is mount that ISO as the G drive and attach that drive to the KVM of our Cisco UCS blade. Once that's connected, I'm going to go ahead and boot the system. Our profile is automatically assigned to boot from the ISO that's mounted, and we can see upon booting, we're presented with the bootloader, which allows us to choose either installation or boot from local disk. We've gone ahead and chose the installation. The ESXi installer is now loading, and within a couple seconds, what we're going to see is the ESXi installation options. The first thing we need to do is agree to the end user license agreement. It's going to then go ahead and scan for all of our devices, including our drives. And we can see right here that I do have one LUN presented. This is marked as a remote drive. I'm going to choose our language options, as well as assign a root password. Within a couple seconds, we'll have to confirm installation. This is confirming that we're going to install on that remote drive and that the drive will be destroyed. By pressing F11, we're going to choose Accept, and ESXi will be installed to that drive. Once it's complete, we'll go ahead and dismount the ISO and push the Enter key to reboot. We're now rebooting on that remote LUN and ESXi is started, the first thing we're going to do is press F2 and log in to the console of this host, where we'll go ahead and set the, the IP information for the management console. So what we're going to do is assign the IP address, subnet, and default gateway. This will be the IP address of the VM kernel management port what we'll use to connect to the host with the vSphere client, as well as a virtual center server. We'll now go in and put in our primary and secondary DNS servers, as well as a host name for this device. We'll call this one ESX4. We could also put in any custom DNS suffixes, as well as our VLAN ID. Once we hit escape to exit, we'll be asked to restart those management, uh, the management network, where we then go ahead and test that management network. And if everything's configured and cabled properly, we should be able to ping our gateway DNS as well as resolve our DNS name. All right, well, there you have it. Everything's completed. What we've done so far is launch the remote KVM on our host, We've attached the installation ISO to that host, booted the server, accepted the end user license agreement, chose the installation location for ESXi, along with our keyboard layout, we assigned a root password, and then confirmed the installation to the device that we decided on. Upon installation completion, the machine was rebooted, where we then configured the final IP networking settings for that machine. So now we could actually connect to this host with the vSphere client 
or attach it to an existing Virtual Center server. With that, I thank you for joining us today, and be sure to keep an eye open for the next part of our vSphere 5 video series.